the same setup as the ending to Art Swan video. If you want to go and check out to see how I painted this in sort of one day, 11 p.m., you know, half an hour of the actual day it was supposed to be painted on. But if you want to see the creation of this video, you can see it in the cards right there. And today we are going to paint hippos. So uh, I think I had a photo chosen that I was going to paint two animals. Painting two animals is a lot harder than painting one animal. It does kind of double the time. So since we're already behind, we're just going to zoom in and get some better detail on the one animal. And I think it's going to turn out really well. So for this one, the canvas sizes for these ones have been uh, 12 by 16 inches. This next one is going to be 14 by 14 inches. So those are the two canvas sizes that I have for all of my 31 day challenge paintings. And otherwise, we're going to go paint a hippo. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button if you are enjoying watching how I am doing in this challenge and creating these paintings each day. Thanks so much. Okay, so here we are preparing the paint for our canvas. And I'm going to use a three quarters inch um, filbert brush to do the background of this painting. We're doing the really calm, smooth water reflections again, and we're doing different shades of blue, green, and white in this uh, mixture. I always make sure my paintings go over the edge of my canvas. It's just a personal preference so that people don't have to frame them when they're hanging up the originals. I, I, it's just something I enjoy doing. Even when I do canvas prints of my artwork, I always do the mirror wrap so that it's just the reflection that um, is wrapped around the canvas and that, that also looks pretty sharp. So this time it took two layers to do this canvas. It covered a lot, a lot better than yellow like we did for uh, the yesterday's swan painting. And you can kind of see the different stripes and then how I kind of pick the color I want to do on the main stripe of the canvas blend it in with the top edge, and then I carry it around the side. If you want more information on how I do really smooth blended backgrounds, um, there's more information in my Skillshare class that is free with the link from my previous YouTube video. Actually, we can link it in a card. We'll do that. But yeah, basically this is just one background, and then I'm going back and adding in a little bit more straight white lines just to really kind of make it look like water and yeah this is what the final background looks like as always with my paintings i start with a really rough chalk sketch this is just a lot easier because if an ear looks slightly off or you know the eyes a little lower it's a lot easier to erase chalk and redo it than get too carried away in painting details before you're at the stage of having everything kind of anatomically placed correctly so I always start with chalk and highly recommend it. It's probably chalk and my Stay Wet palette that I use to keep my paints from drying out too much. Those are the two essential pieces of equipment that I, I don't paint without anymore. Also right now, cause we're kind of gonna go into more of the brush specifics upon request. I'm using a number 10 um, Filbert brush. This is actually the same brush that I used for my entire Skillshare painting. The background and the animal, even all the details, it's got a really nice fine edge on it. I think it's like a level two, you know, so you don't have to get really fancy brushes. I think they're like $6 and they just work great. For the water to get a bit of a sharper edge and so that I can blend it out a little smoother, I am using a sword brush. So those are the ones that are kind of on a really steep angle. And I use that just because it's, it holds a lot more paint than a liner brush, but you, you can get a really fine edge. Sometimes I'd use it for filberts, but you can use a filbert to get that kind of water straight line edge, but I used a sword brush this time. It's kind of funny with paintbrushes because they're a bit of a luxury to have. They're not a necessity to have a bunch of different types. You can absolutely do a whole painting just with one or two different brushes. Oh, you can see that the day changed. So we painted about three or so hours uh, on the day it was supposed to be day three for the hippo because the swan took until like 6 p.m. and then I had to edit that video. 
So we only painted from like nine until midnight on the hippos. And then this is now the next day. So I am officially behind one full day on painting. Today, I'm not sure what won the vote between panda or elephant, but after I finish recording this video and getting it uploaded, we are going to paint a whole painting and then edit that same video tonight. Hopefully I can get on this kind of path and uh, track for the future. And then I'll be able to, you know, eventually make up that one lost painting before the end of the month. So we can still do 31 paintings in 31 days. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm using a filbert brush that's a bit older and it's pretty splayed out at the ends. I never throw away my old brush because they are perfect for this kind of texture. So this is called dry brush blending. Basically what I do is it's the, the paintbrush I have is very dry and you're just putting the paint on the edges and then kind of just like rubbing it into the canvas. So because I custom prepare the um, Baltic Birchwood canvas for, for myself, I sand them really smooth so there's not a lot of texture to, to go off of. If you do this with the canvas, you really get to see a lot of the, the bump texture in the canvas, it brings it out. But either way, when you're dry brushing, it kind of makes a unique texture look and it's really useful for something like this when you have hippo skin. Now I'm working on all the dots on the nose. This is a detail that I always wanna put in kind of near the end of the blending because it does kind of change the appearance. So if you were to have everything kind of color toned correctly, then it's a little harder after you add the dots. If you think like, oh, all these black dots kind of make it a little too dark now. Yeah, when I'm working on the eye, basically, this mama hippo has such an adoring squinting look in her eye. And you can tell that she's just like, it's just such a fond gaze, I, I think anyway. So I really wanted to capture that expression. You know, we've all been there. You see a toddler or somebody do something cute and you're like, ah. So that's kind of what look I was going for in this. And I just think it's such a fun contrast in how wrinkly and squished the mama hippo's eye is and just other textures of her face compared to the very smooth skin of the like pretty much newborn baby hippo that we have in the in the image so now i'm just kind of tweaking the shadows and stuff and it, this whole stage of the painting the last like i don't know up until this point really i refer to as the ugly stage of paintings you you really are just throwing colors on there, trying to get the approximate right color and tone of, of light and dark and, and loosely the right colors. So we have some more purple, we have some more red tones that it, you're not trying to match it exactly. You're just trying to get it as closer as you can. And then now we're in the refining stage of the painting where it actually starts to look, you know, kind of decent. So basically this is when you're, you're like tweaking all the edges to make sure that everything's aligning right. You're getting all the wrinkles. You know, we're not doing any of the fine details like the hair or the really soft wrinkles that we're gonna paint on over top of our kind of final blending layer. But at this stage, it's really important to kind of see how everything's gonna go overall. So that's kind of why I jump around in my painting. I kind of paint the whole thing at once so that when I mix a color, I can kind of put it in a few different areas and it all kind of match. So you can see I'm adding a lot of red, warming up kind of the closer side of its face. And now we're adding some of the splotches. And normally in a painting like this, I will kind of paint one animal after the block in stage and then move on to the second animal. And that's because the, the colors are slightly different than I'd use. So the Mama Hippo is a little bit more cooler toned so that you can get that perspective of knocking them in the back. Oh, uh, this was a really fun part, putting in all these, these little hairs. It actually took a significant amount of time to paint. And I'm using a, a liner brush. I think it's three over zero for this. Yeah, and I'm not using pure black. I'm actually using a Payne's Gray mixed with the purple color so that it's a lot softer. And 
some of the hair was a little bit intense. So you're gonna see me go back over it and kind of knock some back. So I add a little bit of color around. Sometimes the liner brush kind of has a little splotch at the beginning of the line. So I'm kind of going around and, and blending those in so that they don't stand out as much as like a big black dot and then the brush stroke for the finer hair. And now, now I'm gonna go in and add all those little line details that help give the skin a little bit more texture. So I do this first with white to kind of get a bit of highlights. And I'm also adding dots of pure white. So that's kind of like the water droplets or splash. So we're really adding all those little dots of white around to really get that glint and the perspective in. And it also helps kind of make the skin look, look wet. I also put little white dots at the base of the, um, the hair as well. Okay, and now we're on to our little baby hippo. So this will go a lot quicker because I've already done a lot of the playing around with how I want their texture of their skin to go and what kind of colors I've decided on keeping. And I have all of these kind of mixed and on my palette so that I can really just make some really quick progress on the baby hippo. I took a break um, between the two to finish editing the swan video for about three hours. So this was about nine at night that I'm returning to the baby hippo. And yeah, it's just little ears are so cute. So what I'm trying to do in the ear is there's actually a lot of red inside it because of the light kind of showing through really, really thin skin. So that's one thing I'm trying to pay attention to, like how thick skin is and how the light looks so that it can kind of give that different appearance. And the eye of the hippo looked so strange to me while I was painting it. So I just decided to do all of the highlights in it first and then go back and add the other textures. But it was really fun when I was painting the eye because I actually went on Google and I looked up a whole bunch of reference to see what their pupil looks like, how dark they are, how white is the area outside of their eye. And you, you don't want too much white around an animal because they can kind of look really stressed out. So it was kind of finding that perfect balance of trying to get a really curious look so that you wonder like, what's the baby looking at when the mom's looking at the baby, that kind of thing. And then I go in and add all the white lines like I did to add texture. Now I'm adding the darker lines. So we're really playing around with trying to get the different wrinkles around the baby's eye because it is still wrinkly, it's still a hippo, but it's not as wrinkly as the mom's eye. So it was kind of fun to play with that contrast and I probably spent the most amount of time on the baby hippo on the eye of it. And yeah, adding all those little dots so you can kind of see where I've done a quick white, like thin line. I go back and I add a few dots around that line because that kind of helps bring out the, the glint as if like there's glare kind of on wet skin. And I used a bit too of an intense black color for those lines so you can kind of see me go back with the, the purple red colors and knock them back a little bit so that they're a little softer and I thought I was done and then I was like oh wait we have water reflection to do and to smooth out the one for the mum as well so I very quickly um, worked in the colors and I was almost running out of my purple color so it was kind of just the perfect amount that I mixed at the beginning Okay, and this will conclude day three of painting hippos. So I hope some of my extra brush tips that we included in here were helpful and useful to you. Um, please comment animal suggestions below. I would love to hear what you want me to include in the challenge. You can also direct message me on Instagram. And we are either going to be painting an elephant or a panda today for day four. I haven't even checked the voting results yet, but we're gonna go find that out and see what we can create today.